It's Rob in for Bruce. Mark Devine is here. And as you just heard, Becky Lynn's in for Pamela. These are the big stories everyone's talking about. We call it the playlist. Track one. Another mixed bag of economic news this morning. The economy added about 80,000 jobs in October. The unemployment rate dipped 0.1% to 9%. Now, any jobs that at this point are taken as good news, but the number of new unemployment claims still hovering around 400,000 per week. Look, our confidence is shaky. This isn't going to help. We got a long way to go, and I hope somebody takes the lead and says, we're going to start hiring, we're going to give people raises. Well, I will say U.S. Airways this week did bring back some jobs to the states from places they had them you know, out of the country, so that's good news. More people here getting hired. Could be a lead, yeah. Come on, Devine. I, I, yeah, I'm rusty, man. I, I forgot to turn my mic on. Um, but uh, you know what's funny is that the White House reacted to this by saying, you know, we are in a, in a slow economic period, and don't be surprised if the numbers for unemployed are very similar a year from now, which is basically their way of saying, don't expect too much. So maybe if it's 8.9% unemployment next year at this time, you can elect the president again. <laughs> It's been a long week for Herman Cain, but here's some good news for him. Two polls taken this week show his standing with Republican voters is actually growing. In a Rasmussen poll, Cain has 26% support nationwide compared to 23% for Romney. And in a Washington Post poll, Cain's neck and neck with Romney. And why is this Becky Lynn? Because Republican voters don't care about the sexual harassment allegations because... We like the guy. That's just what we do. Right. You know, well, I think it's the same, you know, when Bill Clinton, with with the whole mess with Monica Lewinsky, most Democrats were like, why are we bothering with this? It's inconsequential. It has nothing to do with running the country. So we're, you know, Democrats, Republicans, we're all just looking for things that validate our own viewpoints. I don't know. He kind of freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> I, I, he's, he's Uncle Creepy to you? Just a little bit. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Track three. All right. You know that uh, Texas judge who's being investigated because his daughter released a video of him beating her? Well, he will not be charged with any crimes, Uh but it's not because of a lack of evidence. Uh, If you've seen the video, you know that. Uh, Rockport, Texas police said that Judge William Adams will not be charged because the statute of limitations has expired for child abuse cases. Adams could still face disciplinary actions at work. Well, and it's kind of interesting that a family law judge who has presided over child abuse cases can still preside over those cases. He's on leave now, so I hope something happens there. But if you watch the video, there's no question about it. He went overboard. Now, I did not see the video yesterday, so I'm going to have to watch it. Who made the video? The, the, daughter. the daughter, daughter, actually. The daughter, when she was 16 years old, seven years ago, knew she was going to be punished for illegally downloading computer games and set up the camera going in her room for when her parents came in. So, obviously, this had happened before. She oh, had yes. been beaten before. Yeah, she admitted uh-huh. that yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Just scary to me that there's an actual statute of limitations on child abuse cases. Um, but but let's just say he, he's not facing any charges, but Judge William Adams will be getting fewer party invites. <laughs> this year. I think, you know, there's not as many Evites Absolutely. waiting for him. So I know you guys have all been waiting to hear what Reverend Jesse Jackson has had to say about these Occupy Wall Street protests. Well, fear not, he's spoken, and he says from his home base of Atlanta that his Rainbow Push Coalition is strongly on their side, adding that this movement really is just an extension of the civil rights movement. Yeah, with white people and their dreadlocks and smelly beards. <laughs> Look, Reverend, with all due respect, since you were there the day Martin Luther King got killed, there's no comparison between the two. Of course, there's no comparison between the two. But um, it is a form of civil rights. You're supposed to have a right to protest, say what you think. So I'm not going to down them for that. They smell bad back here. Okay, I know. They've been in the airport for eight days. <laughs> you know, I think Jesse Jackson's done a lot of good things. He's done a lot of ridiculous things also. And this is a stupid bandwagon for him to jump on, and especially to compare it to the civil rights movement, which I think had a tad more focus. Mm. Track five. Flags are at half staff today to honor Glendale Police Officer Bradley Jones. His funeral today, Officer Jones was shot and killed last week on duty as he and a probation officer were meeting with a parolee. The suspect, Ryan Heisler, later was shot after he fled the scene and he remains in police custody. You never want to hear stories like this. It's sad, but all I can do is say my thoughts are going out to the Jones family and my thoughts are going out to all the police officers that are serving right now in uniform. You know, it's really such a strange story because the suspect didn't have 
anything really resembling this in his past. Most of most of the stuff he was on in trouble for was was kind of petty drug related offenses. So you got to think that drugs probably paid or played some part in the way he reacted to this because he wasn't in trouble. They were just going to visit him. And you know, it just goes to show that every time the police officers put on the uniform and go out there, even as could be just a mundane day, just typical things like this, it's always dangerous. You never know what can happen. We need to remember that. Sure that. Track six. Okay, a couple of days ago, the big scandal was the woman suing Justin Bieber yes. for child support. She's Bees. looking she's looking at the Bieber for child support. She claimed her and Bieber got it on backstage after <laughs> one of his concerts. Now, police in Los Angeles are saying they could investigate this case because the woman says she was 19 years old when it happened. Uh-oh. Bieber was only 16. Yeah. Uh, that could count as statutory rape. Look, be careful what you wish for. I know that you're looking for money, and this gold digger might wind up <laughs> looking for a cellmate. Yeah. I'm just wondering, did she check with anybody before she made this big p- proclamation? It, was this a good idea? Did she not think, oh, I'm above age, he's underage, I could be charged with rape? Only yeah. thought of money, oh that's all. It's, it's, it's like the guy who has his marijuana stolen then calls the police exactly. to, you know, to, to have them track the guy down. But my question was, if this incident actually did happen, did Justin Bieber's hair move? <laughs> <laughs> you know the just, answer to that. Just it's, curious. His hair wouldn't move in hurricanes, man. It's just that's the way it is. Mark Devine, Becky Lynn. Holding it down on the playlist. My name's Rob Hunter. Those are the stories everybody's talking about. And now you can, too. Now you can watch it on video. What's up? Yeah. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be on the internet today. Yeah, and you are. You're, yeah, exactly. <laughs>